My name is Gail Spring and I'm the Adjunct Associate Professor of Scientific Photography at RMIT University in Melbourne, Australia. I've worked in forensic and biomedical photography for over 35 years and have encountered many imaging problems in that area. I'd like to share with you now a few tutorials and demonstrations addressing some of those issues that I've discovered. Welcome to this demonstration on axial illumination. Uh, axial illumination uh, is a lighting technique where the light itself seems to be coming directly from the lens. And this is really good for uh, things like uh, photographing down small narrow openings like maybe a bullet casing, uh, sometimes jewelry uh, photography or down a pipe, uh, down a barrel of a rifle trying to show the rifling marks in, inside the rifle. This is very problematic with any other type of, of lighting except axial illumination. Axial illumination now requires a fairly basic setup, uh, but it's how you set it up that makes it work. We start with a light source. Uh, we're going to use a projector, which we'll discuss uh, a little bit more later. Uh, a projector that uh, is going to put out a light source that's going to be reflected off of a, a piece of glass down into the subject. We're going to be using a camera, in this case a 105 millimeter uh, macro lens. Uh, that gives me a good working distance so I have a way to light it from uh, underneath. And I'm using a full frame uh, Nikon D4. I've got a couple of stands here and the advantage of using these kinds of, of arms is that you can really adjust them carefully and when you lock it down it doesn't move. I have two of these, one to baffle off any light that may uh, be extraneous to the lighting of the object and the other one of course to hold the mirror in a perfect position. Behind me I have a black curtain which is going to absorb any light that comes through the system so it doesn't reflect back into the mirror and shine back up causing any reflections or specular highlights that might be behind it. So let's look first then at the light source itself. Remember that the point of axial illumination is to actually get light down into an area that might be recessed. It may be a very long piece of pipe, it may be a little shorter, but we need to get light in there. This is an example we're going to use today, which is simply a 10 cent piece placed in the bottom of a little tube. Many people simply think that, well, a ring light uh, or a ring flash might get light in there. That'll be the first thing that they think about, and yet, the light is not even and if you get too close to it is illuminating around the object and not into the object. Another thing that people will try is using a regular flash and simply trying to get it as close as they can which will get in the way of the lens and light is still coming from an angle so at best it's near axial illumination certainly not perfectly axial illumination. So for this light source in this demonstration we're actually going to use a slide projector. Now, slide projectors are pretty antiquated now, but you can still find these around uh, various areas in labs and studios and, and where that will be covered with dust, but are perfect for this example of axial illumination as a light source. I'll take a 35 millimeter slide, this is a glass slide with just an aperture in it, and I'll put that in where the slide normally goes. And what that's doing is it's simply uh, eliminating the extraneous light that's going to go uh, around the object and aims it more into the center. So when I turn this on now, I get the light source going straight in a narrow angle towards my uh, axial illumination setup. Now the setup here, we have light coming through and you can see that it's illuminating this uh, glass. And I'm cutting a little bit of this light with this cutter down here. You can see if, if I move it up and down, you can see the light that's spilling on the, on the stand. I want to bring that cutter up just to the point that it's only cutting off the light from the object itself. Once that's in position, I can now work my mirror to, if all the geometries are set up correctly, I'll set this up to approximately 45 degree angle because I've got 90 degrees there, I've got a light that's elevated uh, to a point that it's coming straight through the middle of this glass. If we look at the image, what's happening is we're looking through the glass down to the object itself. Light is now coming from the, uh, the light source, in this case our projector, is hitting the glass and reflecting down as we actually look down to exactly the same angle. If we look what's happening on the other side though, 
we have light that continues through the glass and it's going to continue to a point that it hits something and reflects and that reflection could then come back and hit this side of the glass and bounce up. Therefore, we need to have something that baffles that light or absorbs that light. We simply use some black material. Uh, it doesn't have to be totally black, uh, but it has to not interfere with any uh, specular highlight or uh, affect the exposure at all. At this point now, we have to look through the camera to actually see what's happening, and we can now move the mirror back and forth to the point that we actually get an even circle of illumination through down into the tube. That's the fundamentals of axial illumination. One thing else I would like to mention, again, about the geometry of how this is set up, is the camera should be set up perpendicular to the baseboard, and the light source should be at about 90 degrees to the light and falling somewhere between the lens and the object. I mentioned earlier about using a 105 millimeter macro lens to give me a working distance but still at a high magnification. If I had chosen something like the 60 millimeter or 50 millimeter macro lens, my working distance, the distance from the uh, lens to the object, would have been uh, closer. And as you can see, I actually need some area between the two to operate my uh, reflecting mirror, which is actually nothing more than a piece of glass. That's really about it. It's, it's quite a simple process. We can go more highly scientific and we can spend a lot more money on very specific and dedicated light sources and, and true semi-reflecting mirrors, but um, for practical purposes and keeping the budget down, this works just fine.